G'day all, it's Colin from PC TLC and thanks for joining me. In this video, I'm going to be installing Slackware. Now, Slackware I've already got installed on VirtualBox. We'll have a look at that. But this is the Slackware website and they have released Slackware 15. So that's the one we're going to look at. There's the latest release. But if we check out uh, the release page here, as usual, they have to get everything perfect and you just can't rush that, they're saying. They're happy to announce the availability of the new Slackware 15 stable release. Um, there's been way too many changes to even begin to cover them all here. Things that they've done is they've gone with the 5.15.19 Linux kernel, and you'll also enjoy a refreshed desktop experience, including the KDE Plasma 25th anniversary edition with support for Wayland sessions. So for additional information, you can go to the release notes, which I've done. It says here we've actually built over 400 different Linux kernel versions over the years. It took to finally declare Slackware 15 stable. So that's a lot of testing there. They finally ended up on version 5.15.19, which I mentioned after Greg Hartman confirmed that it would get long-term support until at least October 2023, and quite probably for longer than that as well. And as usual, the kernel is provided in two flavors, generic and huge. The huge kernel contains enough built-in drivers and in most cases an init RD is not needed to boot the system. The generic kernels require the use of init RD to load the kernel modules needed to mount the root file system. So it goes on and on a little bit there and we can uh, check that out. There's a little bit more of a right up there. You can, I'll leave the um, link in the show notes and there's a little bit more there as well. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be having a look at my Slackware install to start with. So this is the login to my Slackware. Now it took me, I think, two goes to get this right or maybe three, I cannot remember. I did have trouble with the wired connection. I don't know why I had trouble with the wired connection and I cannot remember actually how I got that running. <laughs> we're gonna run through another build of Slackware and see how I got to this point. So we're going to do that. But if we have a quick look at this, um, I'll just show you what was in here. I, I decided to select everything and install everything, which was what, what was recommended anyway. Education, we've got some education stuff here. Nothing that I would probably use, to be honest. Games, I don't normally use games. Graphics, okay, we've got Gwen View, K Patience, Card Game. Image Viewer, never heard of that one. K Color Chooser, Carbon, Scalable Graphics. Color Paint, Critter, Ocular, Scan Light, XPDF, XPaint. So quite a few things there. Under Internet, we've got Falcon Web Browser, Firefox Web Browser, KDE Connect, of course, Internet Radio, Kmail, which I'm not a big fan of, to be honest. KTorrent, Sea Monkey Web Browser, Pigeon Internet, Messenger, Thunderbird. So there's quite a few things there. We've got um, Easy Tag, Music Player Elisa, K3B. Kdin Live, M Player, XMMS Audio Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control, and Office. We have Caligra Sheets, Caligra Stage, and Caligra Words. K Organizer. So quite a few things there, and then we've got the settings, of course. So that's everything that comes with the Slackware. I've tried installing some myself tried installing Cherry Tree and installation of um, applications in Slackware is a little bit um, on the odd side, but uh, we'll check that out as well. So let's shut this one down. So if we check out this page here, it actually says that um, Slackware 15 now has support for EFI firmware. So maybe it didn't have support for that before. I'm not sure. I've never tried Slackware before. So what I've done here under this second build is I've um, put in um, under system EFI. So I've enabled EFI for that. And we're going to start Slackware. So this is Slackware with the huge .s kernel. So let's do that. And we're straight into the install. 
So let's get on with that. Um, if you've got a US keyboard, you just hit enter, which is what mine is, US. You may now log in as roots. Once you have prepared the disk partitions for Linux, type setup to begin the installation process. So we just type root. So I used CF disk, which I find the easiest out of all of them. CF disk. And we are running an EFI system. So we're going to choose GPT. And we've got our free space. So we're going to create a new the partition size. I'm going to make it 600 with a capital M for megabytes, 600 megabytes. And we're going to um, type will be EFI system right there. Then we go down to our free space. We create new. I'm going to give it uh, four, um, sorry, four capital G, four gigabytes, four gigabytes, and it's going to be, uh, we go to type. I'm just arrow, using the arrow keys here. So type and press enter. And we're gonna make that Linux swap. And then we're gonna go down to free space again, uh, create another new partition. And we're gonna use the rest of that and it'll already pick up that it's a Linux file system. But if you haven't, if you're unsure of what to select, it's Linux file system right there. That's what it is by default anyway. Then we're gonna arrow across to right and we're gonna write that. And we have to actually type yes, I believe, enter that and that's done. So now what we can do is we can quit that Now we can type setup. And in we go. So we can remap the keyboard. If you're not using a US one, we are, so that's okay. So set up your swap partitions. Let's add swap. So we've got the dev SDA to a swap. So we're okay on that. So do you wanna, would you like to check for bad blocks? No, not unless you suspect something's wrong with your disk, but that will make that go a lot longer. So we'll just no on that. And it's going to add the dev SDA to swap partition to the Etsy FS tab. Let's click okay, select okay on that. So we're gonna select the partition to use for root, which is dev SDA three, we'll select that. And quick format, yep and we'll use ext4. And that's gonna add that to the Etsy FS tab. Okay. And if I system partition was found on dev SDA one, it's not been formatted, would you like to format this partition? Yes. And it's gonna add that to the Etsy FS tab as well. And I'm going to choose to install from a Slackware CD or DVD. And we're gonna scan for the DVD. Now I did get stuck on that a couple of times. I don't know if I did something wrong, but we're just gonna go through this stuff here. Everything's been selected. Um, what I find a bit odd in this one here is that the KDE Plasma and the XFCE desktop are both checked off, which is a bit weird. So I'm gonna deselect the XFCE. I don't want games, so I'm gonna deselect the games. And I think I will keep everything else the same. So we're gonna press okay on that. So I'm gonna go install everything recommended. We're gonna do that. And away we go.
And we're just about at the end of that. Uh, it's asking if we want to create a USB Linux boot stick. I'm going to skip that part there. And um, skip installing Lilo and proceed with uh, eLilo installation. Uh, Lilo, the traditional Linux loader, does not work with machines running UEFI firmware, except in legacy BIOS mode. Instead, you'll need eLilo, which is a version of Lilo designed to work with UEFI EFI systems. So let's go ahead with that and install eLilo on the EFI system partition. Install a boot menu entry. And the entry has been installed. OK. Um, I'm just going to say yes on that. I'm not quite sure what that's all about, but I'll just say yes. Configure your network, yes. Well, actually, no, I think I, I think if we hit the tab button, I exit that. Uh, confirm startup services to run. I think I just left them all default. Network time server, network file system daemons. I'll, I'll do that one. Uh, if you do an email, I'm not sure whether that one would help or not. Cups, if you need printers, you can install the Cups print server. And that's it, so I'm just going to go with that one. Custom screen fonts, um, no on that. Uh, hardware is set to local time, we'll go with that one. And Australia Perth for me, I'll just go with the default on that one. Default window manager will be KDE Plasma Desktop. There is no password set on the system administrator account so we need a password for that so we're going to set a root password and retype that password press enter to continue you may now reboot your system enter that go down to the bottom exit slackware linux setup Please remove the installation disk. And let's, um, I'm going to choose to power off at this point. And I'm going to make sure that the disk has been ejected. And it's empty, OK. Now at this point we're going to start my original um, Slackware. And there's a good reason for that. I need some information from this one that I cannot remember. I did this last Monday. I think it was either Sunday or Monday. And I quite honestly cannot remember how I got the... Um, I know you got to type start X at the start. But there's a way of keeping the login screen coming up. Uh, the graphical login screen. And I've got to remember how I did that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it will be in terminal. And I just need to have a look at my previous uh, commands. And we'll be able to sort it out from there. So I log into this. As you can see, I've got a graphical login. On the new build we just installed, we won't have that to start with. Okay, so let's um, open up my terminal here or console. Arrow up for my previous commands. Oh, actually, it's got to be SU. So we, we log in as root. And then arrow up for my previous commands. Okay, now it wasn't under root, it was under sudo. So yes, I used sudo, not, it wasn't in root, it was actually using sudo. And I would have had to have add myself to the um, sudo users group at some point. So this is the one, this is the one I'm talking about. Now if we scroll down or arrow down and we go to... Yes, it's the uh, the default run levels uh, that we're looking for. So we need default run level 
X whale, X11 Whalen with SDM, KDM, GDM, XDM session managers. So this one here will be set on, I think it's three, I think, or I'm not sure what it's set on, but this is the number you need to change to number four. Um, so that's what we need to do. So if we exit that and we go to our previous command and we need to change that ID to four. Now the other thing I would have done is um, nano Etsy pseudoers. So I would have done that be before that. I'm not sure if it's this one. I think that one's already uncommented. It's, I think it's this one that I did, the wheel. That's the one that I uncommented. So we'll check that out when we get into the new install. So let's do that. I think they're the only things I need to be concerned about there. So we'll now shut this one down and we'll and we'll start up our fresh install. So that's my original Slackware shut down and we'll start up the second build. So what at this point I was very confused when I installed Slackware. I wasn't sure what to do at this point. Um, but reading some of the documentation it uh, recommends that you have to start X to get into um, the graphical user interface and we put in our password. Um, I think we have to type root. Yes, we set a root password, so we've got to type root. Okay. So first of all, we've got to log in. So you log in with root and put the password that you set for root and then we can start X. And there's our graphical user interface, the Plasma desktop. So let's just shut that one down. I'm, go I'm going to do that again in case I confuse some people because I did it wrong as well. <laughs> I got there eventually, but I just wanted to do it cleanly so people understand how that works. So let's start that up again. So during the installation process, you, you set a password for root. So the only way to log in at this point is under root. So, so the dark star login is root and the password that we set for root during the installation. And now we're logged into the system. Now we type star X and in we go. So I'm going to open up a console. I'm going to add that to the, uh, pin that to the panel like so. Uh, we'll just enter edit mode and just move it over to there. So first of all, um, what I needed to do was add a user. So we type in forward slash user sbin forward slash add user. Login name for the u for the new user is Colin and Yep, so I just think I went default on that one. Initial group users. Uh, you can use the up arrow group to um, add users at this point. Press enter to continue without adding additional groups. Um, I, th I think I can add myself to the wheel, I think, for, at this point. And I think that will do. But I still think I need to um, adjust that... Um, sudo was file so we'll do that home directory is home colon okay shell is bin bash expiry date uh, there will be no expiry date this is it if you want to bail out hit Control c otherwise press enter to go ahead and make the account i haven't i didn't do anything with that stuff there and just um entered right through that unless you want to put your name your office and office phone or whatever <laughs> I just uh, went through those uh, kept them blank new password retype new password and the account is set up so at this point we can exit that and we can log out so let's log out Now we can log in with my username. Oh, it's still not there yet. All right, let's just log in under root. 
start x. All right, so maybe at this point, um, what we can do now is, I'm not sure in what order I did all this, <laughs> but definitely we need to um, change that file. So we're going to, first of all, su, I think we're already root anyway, so we need to nano etsy sudoers. And then we go down to here. But this is under the root account, so I don't think it matters whether we do that under here. So what we need to do is X, that's control X to exit that. I'm going to shut down. Let's just shut down the system. I've added a user. Hopefully it'll let me log in under that user. So let's start that up. Password for Colin. And now we're logged in under myself, under my user, and we start X. So we have to do everything under the user account under your user account, not the root user account. Okay, so that's my user account started up. Now I need to add the console back onto the panel. Add the panel, edit panel, move that over. Now we can make our changes. So uh, we need to SU into root. Then we can nano Etsy sudoers. And then we scroll down to the wheel. This one here, I think it is. Well, actually that's control X and that's um, exit, the root account. Let's try sudo nano Etsy sudoers. And I'm not in the sudoers file. So that's what I wanted to check out first before we did that. So now we log back into root, su, root account, password. And then we go back to that one there. Add myself to the wheel. I think it's this one here. Control O and enter to save, Control X to exit. Now we can exit the root. Now we can try sudo again. And now sudo is working. So there we go. So let's exit that. Now the other thing we need to do is sudo nano etc init tab. Now this run level ID should be four, and then we'll get an automatic graphical user login. So we'll change that to the number four, control O and enter to save and control X to exit. We can close that now. And what we're gonna do is reboot. So let's restart that. And if everything has worked right, we should go straight into a graphical login screen. And there we go, graphical login screen with my name already selected and put in my password. And there we go. Now my one problem here is I don't have internet. I'm struggling to remember how I actually got this working. I definitely need ethernet because I'm on VirtualBox. Create that, it doesn't let me do anything. Network interfaces. Advanced network configuration. So let's have a look under network, see what we've got available here. WPA supplement management. Maybe I could use that. The other one's not letting me do anything with it. Well, we get a root password with this one. That might be handy. SSID. Um, study. 7490 is more normally mine. Let's add that. 
so that doesn't work. Oh, I selected the wrong thing, didn't I? Study 7490, and that will be WPA Enterprise. Why is there so many? <laughs> I know it's WPA. Let's try the personal one. Add that. Oh, maybe it's the wrong one. Okay, reading documentation here. <laughs> um, sudo nano etc rc.d forward slash rc.modules. No, um, let's um, exit that. Uh, sudo net config. So we need to run the net config as root. So we need to su and put in our root password. That's the only way it'll work. I've typed this. I've I've typed this many times using sudo as well. It just doesn't work. So and there we go. We need the, the name you want to give your host. So we'll call this Slackware, I suppose. Let's do that and OK. Um, it wants a domain name. Oh, I'm not sure. Oh, let's exit that. I've typed Slackware wrong, haven't I? Host name Slackware. There we go. OK. And we'll call it Workgroup or something like that. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to put there. OK, that. Uh, no on that one. <clears throat> Network manager. Auto configure. Let's try that one. Is this correct? Press yes to confirm or no to abandon. Uh, add the network management control panel widget to your desktop. Yes. <clears throat> settings, accept settings accepted. Basic network configuration is complete. Okay. So that's add widgets, um, network, that's add the widget for network, networks. Add a new connection, wired ethernet, create. For the life of me, I can't remember how I got this working, network. Let's just go with that. <laughs> PCTLC.org. Hello. So I'm going to start up again. I'm thinking maybe I need guest editions and that's why it's not working. I'm not sure. Ah, oh, now I've got a wired connection. <laughs> After all that. All I had to do was reboot. And I've been here for like an hour. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious me. So there's network. I don't know about real hardware. I haven't tried this on real hardware yet. Uh, let's edit this and take away that one. Enter mode and remove this one. And we have a widget down here. And let's go to internet and make sure we have something running at least. Let's try YouTube, see if that comes up. Yep, no doubt we have internet running. I haven't tried this on real hardware, so I could only imagine my real hardware is normally wireless. So I could have probably even worse time. But then again, my wireless sometimes can be easier to set up than ethernet. All I had to do was probably run the net config and restart. <laughs> That's probably all I had to do. Okay, so that was the install of Slackware. Um, that was a painful experience to try and get network going when I probably all I had to do was run the net config, put in a couple of things for the network, um, Slack and Slack.org or whatever you want to put in there. I think it doesn't matter. 
and probably just reboot and it's running. <laughs> I was messing around for ages. Oh my goodness. Now what I might do is I might try this install on real hardware and maybe give some results on that. I will try and put some links to some of the um, pages that help me out. Within the Slackware web page there, there's some um, networking helping pages and so forth. But that was a fairly simple process at the end of the day. After going through the process, it just was not obvious. <laughs> But however, all the other things to install Slackware was, uh, went, went fairly smoothly, so I was happy with that. Um, I did it in the first go this time. Didn't need a couple of goes at it, so that's all right. That was all good. And I've taken you through what's installed on there. It'll be all the same because I selected everything. And I think, some, I think it was Aris that mentioned just select everything and then remove what you don't want is the easier way to do it. So if we have a, a quick look at Slackware, you've got all your help things down the side here. If we go to packages, um, and there's uh, packages, slackware.com packages, packages.slackware.com. Now, if we go to Slackware 64 current, sorry, I, I did that wrong, uh, under here, Slackware 64 current, and we search under that, uh, I was just gonna have a look at what I do and don't have installed on here. Uh, looks like we don't have Audacity, so let's see if we can find Audacity under here. Nothing found. Uh, do we have GIMP installed? Graphics. Oh, we have GIMP. Okay. Let's see if we can find Celluloid. Nothing found. Have a look for Handbrake. Nothing found. VLC, nothing found. So you can look for packages in here, but I think their packages are not quite there yet. Now you can go to here and you can check probably under alphabet and you'll probably find, see it needs to be a .txz. So let's see if we can find something to install. So how do we get here? Let's go back. So if we click on Slackware 64 current under this list, and then we go to Slackware 64, and we choose the letter that corresponds with what we want to install. There's obviously no audacity here. That's why I'm not finding it. There's a HTOP there. It's probably already installed though, is it? HTOP? Yes, it is. You probably find that everything within here is installed already. So we need a .txz. That's what we need. Cherry tree .txz file. If I spell it right. So if we have a look under Slackware repositories, uh, we've got Slackware 15. There's not a lot of um, there's not a lot of applications. Only what the, so when you select all, it's probably no point in searching anything else because you won't find it. And here we go. Uh, .txz. This is a .txz file. That's the one we want. So if we um, this is the .txz. So we save link as into downloads and save that. And let's see if this will work now with that one. And that's the download complete. So let's um, check that out. Let's open terminal, su and uh, password, pkg tool, and install from the current directory. Now it's found Handbrake. Handbrake is an open source, blah, blah, blah. So yes, install package handbrake. So let's do that. Now that was pretty quick. I don't even know if it's installed that or not. Handbrake. <clears throat> so it's in the menu, but it's not opening. But apparently that's how you're supposed to install things in Slackware using the package tool 
from what I know, from what I've read. Just thought I'd show you a bit of an example on how to install packages with the .txz file extension. That one didn't work. I've had a couple more that didn't work. So the only way to get everything in Slackware, unless you know the system itself, which I don't, I've never used Slackware before, just install everything and probably remove the things that you don't want. I haven't really looked into how to remove them. I um, can't imagine it can be that hard, but Slackware is um, uh, quite a different beast, I must say. Uh, different to a lot of other things. First time I've ever tried it. Not sure how I feel about Slackware. I think today we get so used to being spoilt with things just working in Linux now. Slackware sort of um, takes you back a little bit in that, in that way. I prefer just to install and have internet running. <laughs> Don't don't like messing with network stuff. I'm not real um, up to speed on that stuff, but uh, if you wanna dive into Slackware and check it out, that's how you can install it. I'm not sure if I've done it correctly or not. It seems to be working all right. It was quite a learning curve for me to install Slackware, so there's always something to learn when you're exploring distros like this one. Would I run it full time? Probably not, I don't think. Um, seems to be very lacking in packages and I think you'd have to build from source anything that you cannot get. I'd have to think that's the case. But uh, it's been um, quite an interesting journey. <laughs> so that was Slackware install on VirtualBox. If I do manage to install it on real hardware, maybe I might give it a try. I might put my findings within this video um, on screen somewhere. Uh, maybe a couple little pictures or screenshots or something like that. That's if I install real hardware. Anyway, that was um, Slackware installed a virtual box. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it interesting and informative. And thanks for watching.